Well, yeah, we don't want to be reminded of the message. Look, Allah is telling the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, ah, so beautiful, for the care. Allah commands the Prophet, remind the people. And he's telling the Prophet, remember you are the reminder. Your mission is to remind. That's why the Jummah has a khutbah reminder. That's why the Eid al-Fitr got a khutbah a reminder. That's why the Eid al-Adha got a khutbah a reminder. That's why when you go for a nikah, the nikah has a khutbah a reminder. But do you know what people say nowadays? We don't need keep it short. Keep it short. There are some people who ask not to even have a khutbah. Recently, someone was speaking to me about planning a wedding ceremony. They said, could we do away with the khutbah? Like, what have we reached to? Wallahi, I'm on a member. They got the audacity, and I'm sorry to use the word, the shamelessness, to say, could we do away with the khutbah? Uh, soon they may say, could we do away with the, with the nikah? Could we do away with the khutbah in Juma? Could we do away with the khutbah on Fridays? Let us do it on Sundays, convenient to us when the shops are closed. That's what we're coming down to. It's a social operation. That's how you see other religions. Unfortunately, they go to church on Sunday, they go to synagogue on Saturday, but do they live God in their lives? Do they? Now we have a lot of Muslims doing the same thing, unfortunately. Again, <laughs> Some people may be feel, feel offended what I'm saying because we don't like to be reminded. The whole reminder, this khutbah is about reminded. Allah tells the Prophet you were sent as a reminder. Allah has designed this deen. But you know what? We all want to hear Islam is the largest growing religion in the world. Or oh, this is that. We all want to hear about that. We don't want to hear about the warnings. What did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tell the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Bashira wa nadhira. Bashira wa nadhira. Yes, give glad tidings to people, but give them the warning. Nobody wants to hear the warning. Everybody gets offended. You speak about come for Juma, people get offended. Pray Salah five times a day. I mean, most people, not all. Alhamdulillah, Allah still blessed us. There are people with iman and faith. Mashallah. You tell people you need to get married, why must he tell us get married? They don't like that khutbah, it was about marriage. Well then take it off from the Quran. Take it out from the life of the Prophet. If you don't like that topic, take it away from the Quran. Go tear the pages off and you deal with Allah on the day of judgment. You tell people give charity, they feel offended. Huh? You tell people do halal things, stay away from haram, they feel offended. So what topic are, we, are you going to talk about? You go around, go around in the world today, my brothers and sisters, and you listen to people after an imam gives a khutbah. There's always some idiot in the audience, and I'm sorry to use the word idiot, but that because they, they just don't understand. Oh, why did you speak about that? Somewhere else, oh, a guy gives a khutbah all the way in Japan, someone here is, is quarreling about it. A guy gives a khutbah in Pakistan, someone in America is quarreling about it. Huh? What is this about? We don't want, because we are too arrogant. This was the quality of the Pharaoh, the Pharaoh. In the days of the prophets, this was the quality of the Kufar, the disbelievers. They never wanted to be reminded. Anything you tell them about, they don't want to hear about it. You tell them, learn to read the Quran. They say, no, we already came Ramadan Tarawi all month. We don't need to learn to read Quran. They don't come to classes. And saying that, I want to let everybody know what classes have resumed. But in Ramadan, a lot of people, the only jurisprudence they know is about the new moon and the no moon. When it's new moon, everybody speaks about moon. They have no clue about jurisprudence. When you travel as a Muslim, what you do, what you don't do. How you join Salah, when you join your prayer, when you don't join it. Nobody knows about jurisprudence. Islam is all based on fiqh. The combination of Quran and, and, and Hadith is the jurisprudence of Islam. What you do? Yeah, there's a lot of jurisprudence pertaining to marriage, to life, to funeral, to eating, to drinking, to living. How many of us learn that? Yeah? 
We don't, we don't pay heed to these things because we don't want to be reminded. You see, I, I, I remember mentioning this many years ago. I had a friend when I went to study Islam. He went also. He lives in America, yeah. Uh, now he lives in America. He was from another country, and I don't want to mention the country because our khutbas go worldwide, so he could be listening. And while he was studying in the university, he heard the hadiths which says, and when you learn something, you've got to practice it. Well, he left the institute immediately. He said, I don't think I could practice what I'm learning here. Oh, yeah, he left. Left, left, left. He was from a rich family. He was a black belt karate expert. He had some things on his side. So he's like, I don't need to practice this. But I don't know it because I will have to practice it. Sometimes I wonder, is that why people don't like to go to classes to learn Quran? to learn fiqh, to learn jurisprudence, what we should do and what we should not do. The whole thing is about this Islam is about a reminder. It's designed like that. But people don't want to be reminded. It's unfortunate. That's why people used to abuse the messengers in the days of the Prophet ﷺ and other ambient prophets. Go through the history. All prophets were abused. Why were they abused? Have you ever pondered why they were abused? Why was Jesus, peace be upon him, abused? Because he was telling the people, stay away from wrong and do what is right. Why was Musa, Prophet Moses, peace be upon him, abused? Because he was telling the people, do what is right, stay away from what is wrong. So Pharaoh wanted to kill him. Why was Ibrahim, a.s., thrown into the fire? He was telling people, don't worship the idols, don't worship the idols, worship the one God. They threw him in the fire. Why did they want to kill Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him? Because he was telling the people, worship God, worship one God, don't worship idols, stay away from haram, and do what is right. So they say, we're going to kill you. We don't need you to tell us that. That's the world we are becoming like that nowadays. Unfortunately, we are becoming like that nowadays.